Welcome to Kit Plus Daily, where we once again have a packed show for you. If you're a first-time viewer, then worry not. The three of us are all working from our homes and teleported into this virtual studio by some clever technology. Like many countries, the lockdown in the UK continues and uh, we're hoping you're all staying safe and well wherever you might be. So another special guest is waiting in our virtual window that John in particular has been looking forward to. And that'll be coming up after the news. And the news starts with Sennheiser, um, who have announced another round of online training courses and workshops for the AV and pro audio community. In the coming weeks, they will be presenting a wide range of free educational webinars, including RF basics, wireless microphone theory, and the live sound monitoring masterclass. Full details of all the courses are on the link on screen now, and be sure to bookmark that page for updates to the schedule every week. Happy learning. MSE has a new offering in the long line of problem solving equipment stands they've been producing. There's an increased use of gimbals on multitude of shoots nowadays, so Matthew's created the new docking system to keep these essential tools out of uh, out of harm's reach. Um, uh, and, well, and ready for action between shots. It's a combination of the slider stand and the dirty dock, uh, and results in a very handy platform for rig adjustments during shooting, etc. Uh, so with a three foot pr footprint uh, as well, it's a fraction of the size of your traditional car making it much easier to get in position and close to the set. Brilliant. And news from Avid. Uh, today they announced that globally they have seen more than 2 million downloads of their free tools. They're being uh, Pro Tools first, Media Composer first and Sibelius first. Um, Avid's first tools were made to give the uh, new generation of artists essential experience and a career foothold by learning the same tools that professionals use every day. Avid's premium offering has more than doubled since 2018, enabling many creators to ultimately have the option to upgrade to one of the paid subscription platforms. Well, that's it for the news. Now time for our special guest. And welcome to Daniel Lundstedt from Internor. So, uh, Daniel, before we let John loose on you, can you tell us a bit about why Internor seemed to be the go-to solution for remote production? Yeah, thanks. And firstly, thanks for, for having me. Uh, good to be here. Um, I would say that, that our range of products in the direct series is uh, offering a lot of interoperability, uh, the, the possibility to, to receive and, and, uh, and send signals uh, back and forth between, uh, between different uh, manufacturers or uh, different platforms. Uh -huh. Uh, is, is definitely one of the, the major uh, benefits of, of unit using uh, internal and our solutions. And actually, Daniel, I've seen um, a lot of webinars you've been doing in different languages. How's that been going for you? Yeah, it's it's been good. Uh, we had a, we had a busy 2020 schedule with a lot of expos and, and a lot of cool events, but. Uh, during the, the circumstances that we're in, uh, we had to rethink everything. So we uh, we partnered up with our resellers, uh, Pantalia in Portugal, uh, TMedia T in Spain, uh, JBNA in the US, and so on. Uh, so we wanted to be able to showcase our new solutions and, and what we've been working on. And holding webinars has been, been great for that. So we're looking forward to to have more events and, uh, uh, yeah, uh, get the, spread the word uh, of Intinor. So, Daniel, I'm uh, a fortunate uh, heavy user of uh, Intinor kit. Uh, we use it a lot in uh, eSports uh, at Gfinity. Um, all our encodes are done through that. Uh, I'm starting to use it a lot, especially nowadays when uh, everybody's having to work from home and we need to start linking up different people in different locations. Um, for me, one of the, the, the main selling points I should, I should think really about Internor is the fact that everything is modular, not so much in a hardware sense, but in a, in a software sense, you can choose to configure these however you want. Can you sort of tell us a bit 
about the capabilities of, of a, a typical, say, like the new internal router, um, and how you can sort of modulize it and customize it to each each customer. Definitely, uh, and and I agree that that is one of our major uh, selling points. And uh, uh, our UK reseller Tyrell uh, has uh, coined the expression the, the Swedish Army knife. Uh, and, and that's what we try to do. Um, it is hardware. Uh, you get it in a, in a box, but uh, we are a software company uh, developing um, or adding software uh, options or uh, features that, that can be fitted to the, the needs that uh, you have for the moment. Uh, and uh, so, for example, uh, NDI was a, a good thing for us, and we like that because that makes it more, even more modular. Because we can uh, add or or remove uh, NDI inputs depending on on what are your current needs. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, for us, obviously, um, in the esports, NDI is a big a big deal at the moment, um, and. To be able to convert different IP formats, to be able to uh, take baseband HDSDI and convert it to NDI, is a fantastic option, and it's something that we can we can do now with um, the internal direct routers. Um, for those who don't know, can you give us an idea of some of the options that you can have in um, a direct router, for example? Uh, the SRT, the Bifrost, the NDI, those sort of options. Give us a sort of a little rundown of some of the things and the capabilities of the unit. Definitely. Uh, so we are uh, trying to, to have as, as many different protocols. Uh, we, can, we can start there. So we're trying to have as many protocols uh, as, as possible um, to be able to receive. So uh, you can receive SRT, uh, RTMP, uh, HLS, RTSP, uh, so we want to offer our customers the possibility to, to be flexible. Uh, if you, um, on uh, one day, you, you need to receive from uh, a cloud service somewhere or you have a new production company that, that uh, has a different encoder, we want them to be able to, uh, to work with that uh, and not be closed closed off to, to only into more equipment. We're from a, a small country where the uh, production companies that have uh, the need to, to receive from other countries or um, they want to receive from um, outside of, of the norm that they usually uh, use, we want to offer them that, that possibility. Uh, and I think that is, is one of the strengths uh, in uh, in the direct router uh, to also be able to both uh, output on SDI or NDI uh, to, to your production system and uh, after that input it again on SDI to NDI in the same box. Uh, you could then have software encoder to, to transcode the material and send it in, in different bit rates or to multiple different locations. So, um, and also there be able to, to use different kind of protocols to, to send these signals. And I think that, that, that the big picture of the direct router uh, gives that unique selling point that, that we're trying to, to showcase here. Brilliant. Um, I think it's worth touching on, I might be pronouncing it wrong, you can correct me of this, but I call it Bifrost. But, uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that and how that worked, because it's, it's quite clever. Yeah, and you're, you're correct. Uh, Bifrost, or BRT, Bifrost Reliable Transport. Uh, that's our own proprietary uh, transport protocol. Um, so when we started to, to develop our backpack uh, with um, 4G, we needed to have a good solution for, for network bonding. Uh, so we started to work with that and um, added network bonding and then added forward error correction. Um, looking at, at the results of, of the first tests, we saw that we also needed redundant audio. We wanted to have ARQ or, or resending for those moments when you, when you actually drop everything. Uh, so um, 
it's a it's a very competent protocol uh, with uh, all of the the mentioned features and uh, adaptive resolution and uh, the bitrate and, and so on. Um, so yeah, it's uh, our own uh, protocol, and, and we're always working on it to to make it even better. That's great, Daniel. I'll I'll just uh, finish off here. Um, just to say, from a user's perspective, the, the equipment is pretty impressive. Um, if people who haven't heard of Internor want to start looking at uh, the products and services that you guys offer uh, and are looking to spec up, say, like a direct route, for example, um, where can they go to, uh, to find some details and contact you guys? Yeah, so um, you can visit us on our uh, website, internor.com and you have all the contact information you need and, and we'll get you in touch with the correct salesperson or, or reseller that are uh, in your region. Brilliant. Daniel, that's great. Thank you very much for coming on Kit Plus Daily. It's been an absolute pleasure to talk with you. And thank you. A pleasure to be here. Well, we hope you learned something from that. Uh, it's always good to have guests in the studio whose kit we use on a daily basis, and that performs faultlessly. And do, of course, tune in tomorrow where we'll have some news of our own to share with you. Things are evolving very quickly here at Kit Plus, and we will reveal all tomorrow. That's it for today. Thanks for watching and see you tomorrow where we'll have more news and, of course, our daily special guest.